What's up? What's up? It's the Arthur Most Experienced with Deke. I'm Arthur Motes, and that's my main man, Deke. What's good, bro? Man, it is another <clears throat> Zach Banner Tuesday. We're still here after a victory on Sunday. So, yeah, man. We had another big time Monday night football game last night that we got a chance to watch involving some division foe, or not foes, a division foe. And actually, another point that we'll be playing. So, man, it was good. Conference it's fun. been a vibe, man. It's been a vibe, man. How are you, though? Ah, I'm doing good, man. Yeah, I'm doing good. It was a fun game last night, actually. Dude, it was, bro. Wasn't really expecting that. I thought the primetime games, whenever you look back on the schedule, mm -hmm. kind of were in the middle, middle of the pack. Just <laughs> because so -so. You, had, you had Steelers, Bills at 1 o'clock on Sunday. You had uh, Browns, Chiefs. I thought those were better games. I thought I those were more deserving of the primetime slots. But... Rams kind of blew out the Bears a little bit, yeah. but yeah, last game definitely exceeded expectations no. right there. Went to overtime. That was just crazy. Nah, facts, man. It definitely was crazy, man, but it was exciting, man. I like that type of game right there. If you're going to have two teams in that kind of, you know, we don't really agree they should be in that prime time spot. We might have had another team we wanted in there, at least make it fireworks like that. I mean, from start to finish, I mean, even the intro, they had the man, was it uh, Young Buffer out there? I was like, whoa, Young Michael Buffer doing his little intro for the for the football game. I was I was a little surprised, man. <laughs> I did not see that, but yeah. I did hear, I didn't see this either, Ice Cube performing with yeah, someone else. Yeah, it was like a whole them. like spectacle, man. Um, it's probably because the Raiders, that was the first time having yeah. fans in that stadium. That's what they were saying. They treated like the grand opening again for the, yeah. It was crazy, though, man. Shout out to you, NSMC99. I see you already tuning in, baby. We rocking with you, baby. Yes, indeed. The Raiders game, Raiders and Ravens, was a fun game to watch. And Justin Reynolds, I see you as well, baby. Yeah. And Tristan Love, I don't know if you're currently on, but I know you tuned in earlier. They say he officially became a member of the Upper Room today for this. So I'm, I might give him two shout outs, man. I might shout him out. Nah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till the live tomorrow because I don't know if he's currently on right now. We'll give him a little time, though. We'll see. But yeah, man. So, going back to that game, though, bro. Lamar Jackson, Derek Carr. Who played better in that yeah. game? <laughs> I guess you got to go Derek test. Carr. <laughs> you got to go Derek Carr <laughs> just without the game finished. You ended up getting yeah, the win. He did. And Lamar but, had the turnover. At the, I, don't think it, like, I don't put it all on Lamar, but obviously he had the turnover in the end, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought he played fine, too. Yeah. Like... The whole question with Lamar is always, can you lead a, a comeback drive mm -hmm. or can you close it out at the end when you really need to? Yeah. <laughs> he ended up running for like 40 or 50 yards he to did. get them down in the field like goal range. Nothing. So it's like, all yeah. right, how much do you need, really need to be passing when you could just yeah. do that? If he could do that every time, then that's fine. But the question is, sometimes you are going to need to make those tough right. throws, stand back in the pocket. But yesterday, he was able to pull it off. Justin Tucker obviously makes it. But man, Derek Carr, 35 seconds. For him to lead Dude, that drive. Man. And then the Raiders kicker was pretty clutch with it, too. Mm -hmm. But then he was the reason that they got the penalty. Right. I don't know if it was his fault or there was a miscommunication on the sideline. Something, they couldn't yeah. find him. Something was going on. But then man. they had the penalty, which then made the offense stay on the field for that last mm -hmm. play. Ravens brought the house, and then they Zay did. Jones is wide open. Derek they Carr did. makes the throw. That's a gutsy call, man. You go zero blitz, middle of the field like that. Whew. No different than what I said uh, in our game versus Buffalo. I'm like, man, you go cover one on this possession down at this part of the field. Full slant. Yeah, it's just tough because you're always going to have somebody running away from leverage. Regardless if it's some type of rub concept, that's what we did with Chase. Obviously, you saw yesterday just that brief little bunch concept causes Marlon Humphrey to bump into a defender. It's just hard to do those type of calls right there. But you like those calls defensively because it challenges the receivers. But as a DB, as a, as a guy that's in coverage, man, it puts you in a bad spot. But I liked it, though, man. I liked it. Though. I thought, like, as a whole, it was just a good game to see. It was. It, it was it was entertaining, man. I don't know if there's any major takeaways from this because the Ravens look a little depleted. You had Max <sighs> Crosby going off with the Raiders. We're obviously well, playing the Raiders. Yeah. Up, we're going to do, like, a full preview. Well, and that's but... tomorrow night, man. We'll obviously do the uh, the live breakdown of that for the live show, man. Because, yeah, not only do we got to talk Max, but I guess, you know, we got a couple of minutes. Can we talk about Al? Yeah, because we probably won't talk about Whoa. him for a little bit, right? Whoa. Until we play them. Yeah. Holy cow, Unless man. Unless he keeps having games like this. If he keeps having games Making like this, we, we won't play him. If he keeps having games like that, we won't play him, bro. We're not going to play him. We'll it, it, for a fact, bro, Lamar would have got killed, man. It was definitely times where I legit was concerned for Lamar's health, bro. But that's what we were saying mm -hmm. 
whenever we didn't re-sign Al. Yeah. Moving him from left tackle to right tackle. I, I didn't really yeah. have a major opinion on this, but did you have a take where he's I more fit like for it. left tackle? He, he's fit for left tackle because he's more of your finesse style blocker. Great footwork, nimble, can dance with guys, struggles against power, struggles against bull rushes because he's more of the finesse style. You typically want a guy like that as your left tackle, but they got Ronnie Stanley. So it was no chance that Stanley was going to be not playing because of Al being at left tackle. But that to me was a surprising part in terms of why they even brought Al over and paid him what they paid him to move him from left tackle to right tackle. He's never played right tackle in the NFL. He's always been a left tackle. And with that, we know last year he struggled with physicality. Being a right tackle, that's typically the guy who has to be physical. That, that's point of attack, run blocking, like everything is right-handed with the offense and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, that that definitely, I, I hope they keep him in. <laughs> if you're TJ Watt, the way Max Crosby looked last night, he looked like an all-pro. He looked like he should have been defense player of the year. If you're TJ Watt, you over here like Chandler Jones had a five-sack game. <sighs> Bird man, just wave your hands, baby. If, if Al's your tackle, when you go back out there, bro, how do you feel right now about Al at left tackle? The thought of us potentially bringing him back in the offseason, and we have Dan Moore at left tackle right now, potentially Chooks when Bannon See, comes if, back. if we're talking about Al as a left tackle, I think it's a different conversation. Just his style, what he's seen football wise, I just think that he would do a little bit better than what he did at right tackle. Right tackle is that's not what he does. Footwork is different. I, I mean, it's just different to go from right side to left side. Not everybody is capable of doing that. And Al, I mean, I don't know if he can grow and get better at it, but yesterday was not a great first impression. Not at all, man. Yeah, and Ravens fans were excited. Yeah, they definitely were, man. We were like, bro. Yeah, I don't know. We're kind of happy we didn't resign. Yeah. It would have been fine if it was at a discount, but if it was for the amount that you just paid him, it's like, that bro, That's the biggest thing, the no amount way. that they paid. Yeah, Justin Reynolds called it as well. He said he was getting smoked. Absolutely, man. It was crazy, dude. Crazy. They and had those, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no. What were you trying to say, man? I was going to say, they had those funny stories about Max Crosby outworking John Gruden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, <laughs> He's the guy in there before Gruden. Gruden would leave and Max Crosby's there after he left. Definitely heard that right there, man. So maybe there's a little bit of that. Or you're thinking it's a little bit of a little bit more of maybe him playing Al Villanueva. I think it was a good amount of the Al Villanueva. I like the Max Crosby, though. I like I, I like his crazy. game as a whole. And I like the feel good story with him. But I've never seen him play like that. Yeah. The same draft. He's a fourth round pick. Clevin mm -hmm. Farrell. I think he went fourth oh, overall yeah. to the Raiders. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that's just completely outplayed yeah. ever since they were rookies, really. Absolutely, man. So to me, like like I said, I like Max games. I like how he plays hard. And I love his story of redemption, man. Him and Darren Wall, obviously, they shared that story a couple of times about their battles with substance abuse. But, man, like, I thought, you know, they played really well in terms of Max. Like, I thought him and Yannick and Gakwe, they both did some good things, man. Obviously, Yannick was going to be hype. Revenge game. But I thought it was good by those dudes. But it is 12-29. So it is about that time to get the big man on the line. It's call him. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we don't play that. I can't be late on the phone call. That's not what I'm going to do. But, you know, I'll talk bad about you if, if I call you on answer on time. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you know how we do. Oh, all right. Now, typically, you know, we never used to have this part live. It would always be the, the game of does he answer on the first? When does he answer, right? We'll that was always out. the that was always the conversation. Now we get to have this live. Yeah, happening. we'll find out. So we're gonna find out. Uh, I got the Zach Banner Tuesday banner up because we're professionals here. You know, we don't we don't just do this thing haphazardly. Nah, not at all. Oh, all right. Hit him on the hit one time. I gotta wait exactly till 1232. Because I feel like that's what really? you're supposed to do. Isn't what you supposed to do as a professional? I get what you're saying. I don't know. Even outside of being professional, you never want to be the first guy at the party being a little too yeah, early you never want to be that, that guy man that's that's not a good look to be that guy we have one guy in our friend group yeah we always point to him and say yeah he's he's always he's the always early guy early. oh man and when he's not around it's like who's gonna be that guy for for this uh, little event here never be early and man. i don't think it's me I, I make it a point it's not me yeah well you saw me I, I'm, I'm gonna pull up yeah i'm a late rival a late arrival guy but it's always gonna be fun when i pull up though all right so here we go see what the big man got going for us today Oh, 
Uh-oh. We're going to have to get on him today. Mochi. There he is. What's the My word, guy. man? How are you, man? Good, bro. How are you? Man, we are well, dude. Celebrating another victory, man. Shout out to the start of the season. 1-0. Right. Can't complain, man. Happy. I know the city's happy. Facts, oh, man. For sure. Man, shoot, man. But give us your thoughts on the game, man. I know, like I said, this was the one where I myself didn't believe that y'all were going to get it done up there, man. I thought that this was going to be a lot tougher than that, but it was good to see it happen. But what were your thoughts on the game, man? Sometimes I'm not surprised when your faith wavers, you know what I mean? Because you, <laughs> you have affiliations to both squads, so I'm not going to be too angry about that. But like, you know, like you said, we proved you wrong, so I'm Absolutely. happy about that. But um, you know, I, I think the biggest things, a couple of different things that we have to take away from this last game was obviously the opponent was, was, was huge. I mean, they, um, they're, 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 you know, regardless of what broadcasters have analysts and, you know, people in our jobs away from football have to say they're a Super Bowl contender. They have a great quarterback, great O-line, great offense and a great defense. Um, so for us to be able to put, all three facets of the game, special teams, offense, and defense together, um, to be able to beat that and to overcome that in a very tough environment. I mean, you made it out to that game. I didn't, but from what some of the guys were saying, it's the loudest. I mean, NFL vets multiple years say it's the loudest place they played. It was an insane um, atmosphere, dude. Insane. Yeah. And I heard, and that's what I heard. I heard it was insane. So for us to come out on top with that kind of like, you know, um, circumstance in the opening week, that's a very promising thing. And then also, too, just from an offensive perspective, man, like, you know, regardless if you have a team that goes undefeated or you have a team that, you know, doesn't have a winning season, um, coming out the first game, there's always going to be something to approve on. Does that make sense? Like, oh, absolutely. Regardless of how stacked your team is or how good you are or how much, you know, how many veterans you have and how well you play, there's always room to improve. And if you don't think so, then you can't, you can't win a Super Bowl at the end because you got to get better and better, as you know, each and every week. So I think for us to come out and lay the foundation for the season, um, it, it takes a promising thing going into week two. I'll tell you that. Facts. It's just me being honest. Facts. Can you take us through your Sunday? Where did you watch the game? Were you just like by yourself at your house? You go over family, friends, little party. And then what did, like, are you one of the guys? that just sits on the couch all day, just watches football, and then feels really gross at the end of the day, like, wow, I just spent <laughs> seven, eight hours of my time just sitting here watching football. Or did you actually go well, like work out or do something after the game? Take us through your Sunday. Yeah, well, first things first is taking care of myself. So definitely got a workout in, um, lighter than usually during the week, just because it was somewhat of a off day for myself. But let the body rest after I was done with cardio and, and massage and take care of my body for the first four to five hours of the day. And um, invited a couple of the bros over, um, some of the P-Squad guys, and then some of the some of my friends away from football just to, you know, just to kind of decompress my mind because as you guys know, and as everybody knows, I'm a team first guy. So me making, you know, the decision and coach team making the decision of leaving me back so I can rest and, you know, get my knee right and use every day as, you know, as a, as a, as a uh, stepping stone towards getting back. Um, but also just mental release, man, you know, having some friends over watching the game. I mean, I didn't leave the TV even for commercials. So, and I never really understood what it felt like, you know, when we go into TV timeout or standing there waiting for the ref to signal us in, I mean, there's some pretty outside of the Super Bowl, there's some pretty weak commercials, man. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it was, a uh, it was, uh, I, and that's, after our game was over, um, I pretty much, unless I'm watching film on another team, regardless if it's a Monday night, Sunday night game, um, I'm not really, I'm not really into, you know, watching other teams play live. Um, I, I, I don't really like the TV copy too much because I got to listen to announcers that are pretty much overpaid for what they do. So, <laughs> yes, damn. <laughs> I love it right there, man. And shout out to the leadership too, man. I heard you talking about having your, you know, P squad guys over and stuff like that, man. I like that right there, though, man. That builds that camaraderie, man. Yeah, man. I think it's, and I appreciate that, Mozi. I think it's, I think the the biggest thing that people need to realize is that every single, and and you know, you try to help them out through that process because you know, early on in the stage of my career, even when I was active, you know, I still sometimes, most of the time, in my first year or two, wasn't even dressing. And so it, you, how do you contribute to the team? You know what I mean? And, and even even guys with the quote-unquote P-Squad tag, 
and the lower paychecks, they got to realize that they're a part of this family as well. Facts right there, man. Now, going back into this game, man, who impressed you offensively and defensively, man? I think offensively, pretty much you got to you got to commend the, the the receiving core, right? Like no one I haven't really looked at the stats or anything. I don't think anybody had that big a big of stats. I think right. the ball was pretty spread out, right? Mm -hmm. But it was um I mean, it was this cl that 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 clutch sideline catch by Claypool over the top when he mossed the dude or that mm -hmm. clutch catch that he caught down the field and looked like he was a little shaky getting up and the Deontay with the double tap, you know what I mean? And, and Juju tap, with the yeah. not only the not only with the with the, with a couple clutch catches, but with the with the special teams onside catch. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I think I think that was the biggest thing on offense, defensive wise. Um, I mean, <laughs> you, you see, you see why my, you see why they pay TJ that much money. Hey. You know what I mean? I mean that ball search by not just him, Serious. but also for everyone else. I think we came out of the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. We came out of the game with no turnovers on offense, mm -hmm. and then we came. You know, we had a couple on defense. Yeah. That's how you win games on defense, and then obviously special teams can't. You know, you got to got to give a shout out to two eight kill, and then also uh, and for the block, and then Yuli with the with the, with the scoop and score, you know how difficult that can be, but he made it seem flawless, mm -hmm. effortless. Now I got to give you a shout out because you said one of the players to watch was Trey Norwood. And from our standpoint, based off his preseason play, we never really got to see him in the slot like that. I was borderline right. ready to cut him. Can you tell me why you thought Trey Norwood was going to have some impact this game? Like, what were we missing? I, it's just, it's, um, it's it's the promising factor of a young guy coming in with confidence. Does that make sense? I mean, when you see somebody like him, not only on special teams, but step up on defense with that kind of confidence and to help uh, support such an outstanding cast. I mean, we got pro bowlers all over the place, veteran first rounders, whatever you want to name them or title them. Um, we have an elite defense. And to be able to step in, be a part of that, and to make it, you know, with, to – to, to do it without skipping a beat. I, I think that's pretty impressive coming from a young cat in his first week. Nah, man, he definitely played well. Going back and watching the tape, I thought he, you know, definitely showed that confidence that you're talking about. Even when he had a negative play, he didn't allow it to become two and three negative plays. He went back and, you know, fleshed it out of his system. So I was definitely impressed with that also. But I And you know how difficult it is for those young guys to have mm -hmm. a next play mentality. You Facts. know what I mean? Like, it's... I mean, you, 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 you were a baller in your college, you know, regardless if you went to a weak school like Kendrick Green did in Illinois. He was a baller at his school. Why, why, so why did you go in Illinois? Somebody got to oh, get a shot, Oh, because we man. do that. We do that. Yeah, somebody's got to take somebody a shot. A but shot we do that bro. to him all the time. You know what I mean? I think he's I think he's won the same amount of games as fingers on a hand. You know what I mean? I think that's pretty much I think that's pretty much what he did. I'm, not, I'm just wow. stating facts. I'm not even really taking shots. You know what I mean? I mean, this is pretty accurate. I, I just, it is accurate. But man, <laughs> but since you brought up the O line, what did you think of the O line's performance? Um, obviously, first half wasn't the the best performance from them, but I thought they rallied in the second half, man. But what what did you see out there? Yeah, I mean, it's always about going in to the to the locker room, making game game plan decisions, and changing it and going out. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I said, this is a great team. A great offensive front or defensive front by them in Buffalo and and their DBs. I mean, a big veteran squad. It's very very hard when we match up in practice. We 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 some most of the time play the best defense in the league. At, you know what I mean Seriously, in practice. Yes. So when we match up to something similar like that on game day and are able to make changes, I think what was a sixty some yards mm -hmm. of offense in the first half, and then and then we come out and put a performance on the second half. That's a that's a that's a you know big props to seven for going in. I wasn't in the locker room at that time, but I'm sure seven got them right, and the coaching staff got them right. And I, I couldn't be more to, more proud of my guys on the O line. Like I said, regardless of how great of a performance you put on, or how bad of a performance you on, one you want to get away with the win, and that's what we did. And the second thing is is you want to learn and and uh, from the mistakes that you made and make sure you don't do them again because that's the tape. The whatever we put bad on tape. That's what the Raiders are going to come out this week trying to emphasize on. Seriously. And now going back to you talking about every day in practice, you guys facing an elite tier defense. Can we talk about these outside linebackers for a second? You've yeah. seen TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, and Melvin Ingram. 
in training camp. Did you anticipate yeah. them having that collective impact to start the season off? Always. And 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 that is I always do. It, 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 I, I never go into a game um, ever doubting the performance our defense is going to put on just because of, once once again, it, it, it's a reflection of their leadership, right? You got mm-hmm. 97 and 9-0 over there. You got Minka in the back. Um, Devin does his thing. Like, they're all, like, they're all clicking. During practice and stuff, they, they, they hold themselves in high regard. Um, it's a high standard. You know, if they mess up in a little bit or they don't get contained on the play, they're going to rewind it and run it back until they get it right. So I'm, I'm not surprised um, by the performance that the OLBs put out because just because, you know, I'm, I'm watching them every day during practice and during training camp get better and better. But once again, it's just very impressive to see it all come together on game day. Nah, seriously, man. Seriously, right there. Now, we had a fan question come in from uh, one of our people in the Super Chat, Nick Y. He says, Banner, what's the after game rituals? A victory cigar or a victory <laughs> shot? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, and I, and I want I want to let him in as, as best I can without, you know, being a federal agent. You know what I mean? I'll leave that up to Deke and his friend. But his I think, uh, yeah, Deke and, his, Deke and his mustache. He definitely looks like a federal agent at that. But um, I think the best thing in the world, cigars is very, very traditional, yeah. right? Like I think if Bama beats Auburn or they beat LSU, um, they, they smoke a cigar. You win the Rose Bowl, you smoke a cigar. Cigars are, are, are really not a thing. I think that's pretty old school. Um, but my favorite thing definitely is a uh, is, is definitely a post-game shot when you get mm. back to the house. 1942. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, keep it on ice. Keep, the keep it on ice. Let's go. Okay. Keep it okay. on ice. All right. We had another one coming from Justin Reynolds. He says, what is your favorite Tomlinism? <laughs> we do not care. <laughs> We do not care. <laughs> that is the best. That is the best meme video, whatever you want to call it. That is the best gift of all time. I think. I think another one is the standard. Is the standard. Mm. He could be talking about us. Uh, <laughs> he could be talking about us in Pass Pro. He could talk about his, you know, his wife making a good dinner last night. The standard <laughs> is the standard. Standard is the standard, man. <laughs> Tomlinism. Okay. Absolutely. And then we had another one coming from my man, Mike Matizic. He says, in your opinion, who is the current best Steelers offensive lineman right now? Oh, mm-hmm. you might have to give props to someone, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's because wow. currently Baron is on IR, so he can't be on this <laughs> list right now. Yeah. That's a really, yeah. really, really good deep question i think the okay i'm gonna change the question and manipulate it a little bit i gotta be i gotta be a pro on this if i take one side of another yep uh, i'm definitely gonna get some i'm definitely gonna get some heat from some guys so this is definitely a political answer but i think the best performance i should say in the game this last week was probably our interior three um and that's no diss against the tackles at all because they stepped up and did a good job but yeah when you see when you see kg and some of the nastiness in terms of how he finishes. And, and, and I mean, there were some guys on their team who got some extra shots in, mm-hmm. got some extra licks in. He's running over. You know, like I told you guys, like, he had the last week, that's slam. a game. Yeah, he slammed yeah, one dude, a, absolutely. That's a, that's, a gang, that's a gang mentality, yeah. like we talked about before. Um, Kevin Dotson does the same thing. And then, you know, shout out to K. Dot Deke's favorite with the 69 jersey. <laughs> and then uh, I think the biggest, biggest, biggest thing, though, that was really cool to see is Trey. Trey Turner come out um, and show why he's an eight-year vet, why he's got five Pro Bowls under his sleeve. Um, you know whether it was you know holding it down in the middle in the, in the pass game uh, consistently, or or moving guys off the ball in the run game, or even getting out in some of the screens. I, th- I remember one time in the first series or first couple series, he, he flatlined, laid, laid out a kid um, running out there in the screen in the open field. Big men running. That's another Coach Tomlinism. Big man um, running, the interior. Guys. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's it right there. I think the interior three really showed that. So there's my little bit of favoritism. Um, good question, though. I like it right there. Do you got anything else, man? I think that is it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it, good. man. Hey, Banner, once again, bro, appreciate you tuning in with us, man. We got to do this again next week, baby. All right. 
Gentlemen, good to hear from you, Deke. You look like you're filling out that jersey a little bit more each and week, bro. Oh, Keep working out. I'm proud of you. You're filling it out. Go. I'm proud of you, bro. Let's go. I may, I may have hit the gym last week. I may have. <laughs> I may Get have had a return. In. Mozi, it's been I'll a talk while. Talk to you guys yeah. later. No, no, bro. Appreciate you again. Sounds good, bro. Later. All right, peace. peace. Ooh. I thought you looked good, man. Thanks. You know, you I'm did. getting there. I'm you're getting you're there. work in progress. You're not. You're not finished yet. I yeah. told you. I took a big layoff. <laughs> I took a big time layoff. Yeah. But need to get back in the gym. I'm getting I like there. it, man. I'm getting there. I'm gonna, I like. I'm gonna it. stay low key about it. But when you see me in that Brad Pitt form, mm. you'll know. I, I can't wait to see it. That's I all. can't wait to see it, man. But dude, another fun banner Tuesday right there. Oh, Shout glad. out to the upper room members, man. Drop them questions in there. That's how we're gonna keep doing this thing going forward. All right, so. Shout out to everybody that tuned in. We'll be in prime time tomorrow night as we start the preview. Steelers, Got to see Raiders, yesterday. week two. It's going to be a blast, man. Can't wait to see everybody then. And until next time, baby. Peace.